Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Shatner, number 101, featuring my long-anticipated retrospective of the game I consider to be the greatest computer role-playing game of all time, Bioware's Baldur's Gate. Uh, now, this game debuted in 1998, and it was designed uh, by a group of uh, medical doctors who quit their day jobs to pursue their true passion, which was designing this amazing role-playing game. Now, it's got everything you could ask for in a role-playing game. We've got great characters, we've got great story, we've got great gameplay. I mean, this is the game that I think every fan of role-playing games should experience. It's a, just a work of art. Now we've got a lot to cover here. It's a very sophisticated, complex, and difficult game, especially if you're not uh, familiar with uh, the AD&D stuff. Uh, so without further ado, here is Baldur's Gate. Ah, uh, now tell me that doesn't make you nostalgic. Black Isle Studios, the elite hardcore CRPG division of Interplay. God, I miss them. Now, of course, this game is based on the advanced Dungeons & Dragons rule set from TSR, Tactical Studies Rules. Now, it's interesting, uh, David Zeb Cook, he was the lead designer on the uh, second edition of the AD&D Rules. He also worked on the Planescape campaign, and he also worked on this game and Pool of Radiance. He's got a great blurb in the manual in the introduction to the Baldur's Gate manual. And according to him, he thinks it's only with this game, it took, it took this long for computers to catch up to the point where they could do justice to the AD&D rule set. And I don't know, I really like Pool of Radiance, but I also really love Baldur's Gate, so be curious to know what you think about that. I just love this introductory cutscene here. Of course, this was back in 1998. Uh, probably the biggest uh, RPG on the market at this point was the Diablo game. That had been released, of course, by Blizzard in 1996, so two years before this. And you can tell they're, they're kind of going, I think, for a similar, a similar feel at the beginning, but you'll quickly notice there's a lot of differences between this and Diablo. I kind of like to imagine in this beginning that this guy getting choked here is your typical World of Warcraft fan, ADHD material, if you've ever ever seen him. And the big dude here is AD&D. <laughs> He's totally badass. <laughs> Just uh, totally uh, whipping this kid's ass. Now, of course, later on you'll find out this is all part of a really big and epic storyline, and... Um, even though this looks like a pretty simplistic confrontation between good and evil, uh, the bigger story is much more complicated and nuanced than that. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> All right, so here we are with Baldur's Gate. The, probably the best CRPG of the 90s, if not of all time. Now, of course, the first thing you have to do with Baldur's Gate is to create a character and you only get to create one character, which uh, kind of sucks if you like the party-based games like I do. Um, Icewind Dale later on will let you do that, but uh, this is still fun. You uh, get a lot of options here. Um, gender doesn't make any difference other than um, appearance. Same thing with these portraits. These are pretty good portraits, too. <laughs> uh, the trouble is, some of the characters you meet uh, might also have these uh, same portraits, so uh, that can be a little bit awkward. I guess, you know, I've never tried out the custom feature there. I wonder if it would, if you could actually upload a, a photograph of yourself. <laughs> that could be uh, kind of uh, interesting or disturbing. Uh, race does make a pretty big impact on the gameplay. Uh, one nice thing about the game, though, you notice it has all the information that you need uh, right there on the screen, so you don't have to keep uh, looking at a manual. Although the manual is rather extensive, nice, thick manual. I unfortunately bought the... DVD thing, so they just give you the that lame PDF. I'm not sure they have the printed manual, but uh, oh well. 
Some of these races have special abilities, resistances. Uh, they also tend to have limitations, especially in terms of what class they can play. Now, if you pick the human, you, you see you've got all the options. Uh, fighters, rangers, druids, paladins, you know, it's... <laughs> these are, uh, don't go into this thinking these classes are exactly like uh, the World of Warcraft, though. You'll be uh, severely disappointed. I'm going to try the bard. I always hate... Uh, playing bards, they tend to suck in games like this, but I just like the concept so much. <laughs> you know, that's that, that's probably the, the closest to my personality, I think. Uh, now here you get to pick an alignment, and this too will have some impact on the game. If you uh, pick something like neutral good and then act evil, you'll have uh, some consequences. Now the abilities, uh, this is kind of interesting. You roll, which is simulating uh, dice rolls, three six-sided dice and you you can uh, roll to try to get good scores but then you can subtract some points and shuffle it around a little bit and it'll even let you store a good roll I'm kinda curious uh, you know I haven't played a lot of tabletop uh, D&D so I'm not sure what dungeon masters allow <laughs> if they really will just let you sit there and roll and roll and roll over and over again um, I, I, t you know, I, I kinda go back and forth on this I like to uh, tweak the characters, try to get a decent character. This is a very tough game, and if you have a really poor character, you probably won't get very far into it. Uh, but on the other hand, I think it's really interesting to play a character with um, unusual stats. Uh, maybe a, a, a fighter, for instance, who's not very strong but very intelligent. Now, I can think in real life you, you could actually go with a combination like that because uh, the smart fighter would you know, work out little tricks and things, but... Um, there's some flexibility here, but <laughs> you probably better go with uh, the recommendations. Uh, now the uh, here's the proficiency slots. Now this is gonna be this can be big too, um, because uh, most of the really great weapons you'll find in games like this will probably be swords, long swords, because uh, that's what they figure that you'll want to play. That's what <laughs> probably 99% of people want to want to have. Um, but uh, you know axes. <laughs> You know, I think if given the choice between a sword and and, and a big, big ass battle axe, I'd probably take the uh, the axe. <laughs> to me, it'd be pretty uh, pretty damn frightening to see something like that headed towards my head. And then you can make some choices here. You know, what do you want the character to look, to look like? And you also get to pick a uh, what do you call this? The voice acting, the, the script. You got to be careful because you, unfortunately, there's a lot of repetition. You'll be hearing this voice over and over. <laughs> so don't pick the Bobcat Goldwaith or you will regret it. Nestled atop the cliffs that rise from the Sword Coast, the Citadel of Candlekeep houses the finest and most comprehensive collection of writings on the face of Farron. It is an imposing fortress kept in Yes, that's right. You start off in a library. <laughs> a goddamn library. <laughs> yeah, you're probably thinking maybe I maybe I bought the wrong game here. Maybe I should uh, just go back to Diablo. But, but 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 just give this game a chance. Now, I told you this game was hard. This is this is not a game that is will suffer fools gladly. Uh, the interface here, for example, uh, you might want to look some of the stuff up in the manual, or at least tab over it, or mouse over it to figure out what it is. Here's a lovely map, and I want you to look at the attention uh, they paid to the every all the stuff here, like that journal screen, uh, the fonts, the backgrounds, the textures. Everything has this D and D theme that is recognizable if you've ever looked through those books, like the uh, the player's handbook and the dungeon master guide. I mean, just look at this uh, information screen there. Isn't isn't that lovely? Uh, they've even got the uh, uh, the sort of medieval fantasy fonts there and a page design. Just so much love uh, went into this game. You can tell these uh, designers were absolutely obsessed with AD&D, and they did a bang-up job on this. Just looking at some of the uh, the options here. Uh, I've never had the pleasure of playing this on multiplayer, uh, but apparently you can get uh, with your friends and uh, have a server <laughs> actually had a IPX option. I don't know what the hell that is, but uh, <laughs> I assume it's pretty old school. Uh, the opening stuff here is mostly just uh, tutorial. Uh, you talk to these monks. 
and they tell you things like how to move around and uh, how to have combat. There's also a few quests you can find. I actually strongly suggest you do those. Or when you get to Candlekeep, you're going to get really intimate with a magic missile in a very sensitive area. My hotel's as clean as an elven arse. You know, I think that's what they told me last time I went to uh, Motel 6, but it turned out to be a lie. Clean as an elven arse. <laughs> Isn't that just fun to say? And this is just, a, a, the, the people who wrote the script, the writers were... Just phenomenal. There's so many instances in this game of really funny uh, lines, funny options, really memorable uh, role-playing opportunities. Now, here's where you can rest. Uh, that's, you know, to restore your health and spells and things. You can also buy equipment. I'm going to get an axe. Of course, you don't have enough gold at the beginning to really get anything good. And the different vendors will sell different items, so you, you should always check to see who's got what. Uh, generally, I, I guess it's true for this game that the more expensive the item, the the better it is usually. So if you've got something like a long sword plus one, uh, that is plus one better <laughs> than the regular long sword, and it's going to be more expensive. Get some, uh, try to get some armor. Oh, I can't afford it. I can try to steal, uh, which I'll try to show you in a minute. Or shoplift. That's that option on the bottom right there. You notice some of these options are sort of grayed out or shaded out. Uh, that depends on your class. Uh, some classes can't wear all types of armor. Now my favorite part of the game. <laughs> uh, you drink to hear rumors, and you can get drunk in this game, and that will have uh, some negative effects on you. But it's still fun. Bl <laughs> bitter black ale. Arabellan dry wine. <laughs> you ever seen uh, these kind of ales and wines and things in games and wondered what they uh, would taste like? Okay, I'm going to try to steal something. This is not going to go over well. I have my grave doubts I'll be able to pull this off, but let's try. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, when you get a red circle under him, that means he's gone hostile. I never have any luck uh, stealing in these games. I, I guess that's why I never... Uh, became a thief in real life because they never could pull it off in games. I guess the kids playing uh, Grand Theft Auto, though, they, they learn a different lesson. You can try chatting with these NPCs. They, they usually don't do anything, but uh, sometimes you can pick up little funny bits of dialogue. I can also find some items that I can sell. I won't be able to sell them to him anymore since he's pissed off at me. Now, some of these things are locked, and you need a thief... Unfortunately, I don't have a thief. Uh, you'll get one later. Uh, but for now, I just have to leave all this stuff be. All right, so that's enough of the of the basics. Let's get into some combat. Now, you're never going to guess what I'm going to get to fight first. Yes, it's rats. <laughs> oh, rats. <laughs> this is the... If you write a computer role-playing game, you have to start off... Having the player fight lots and lots of rats. I, I don't know. What is it with these uh, with the designers and their love of rats? I, I don't know. Maybe it's because they spend a lot of time in the basement and they, they're they familiar with rats. I, I don't get it. But anyway, at least these rats uh, won't kill me. <laughs> if, you, if you get killed by the rats, oh, jeez. That is sad. I guess those cats there might uh, come to my rescue if worse comes to worse. Well, anyway, that's just, a, of course, a, a little opening battle to get the blood pumping. Now, you notice I can mouse over some of these barrels and things, and uh, some of them will light up, and I'll be able to go check them out. Now, that's one of the things that some people are, get. They don't like this because they don't like having to scroll the mouse everywhere. But I think it kind of, I don't know, it, it adds a little bit of, uh, of fun because you never know what you might find. Now, when you're done putzing around Candle Keep, and once you're done putzing around Candle Keep, as fun as this library is, the only real threat here is Conan the Librarian, it's time to talk to your stepdad, Garion, or foster father, rather. He's going to take you on a little trip here. It's not going to go too well. So let's watch. If we ever become separated, it is imperative that you make your way to the Friendly Arm Inn. There you will meet Khalid and Jahira. They have long been my friends, and you can trust them. Now, Garion is voiced by a voice actor named Jim Cummings, and I didn't know this, but apparently Jim 
uh, was the voice actor for the Gummy Bears series, if you remember that. He played Zummy Gummy, the old, old one. Let's hurry, child. The night can only get worse. <laughs> You're never going to listen to him the same way again, are you? <laughs> All right, I'll shut up now. Wait, there is something wrong. We are in an ambush. You are perceptive for an old man. You know why I'm here. Hand over your ward and no one will be hurt. If you resist, it shall be a waste of your life. You're a fool if you believe I would trust your benevolence. Step aside and... And if you didn't see this one coming, I take it you've never read a book or seen a movie. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, the prodigal son is going to be on his own in a very short while. And it's going to get ugly really fast. Now one cool thing about this scene, though, is you get to see some of the uh, more advanced spells. Uh, there's quite a lot of spells in this game, and they have very nice uh, visuals. Especially for the time. <laughs> Maybe not so much now, but it gives you something uh, to look forward to, especially if you're a magic user. Now, you don't have to do this alone, of course, uh, right away. Your trusty childhood companion, the beautiful Emowyn, shows up. She's followed you, wants to help you out. She's really cute, she's really pretty, and she is 20 years old. I happen to know that because that's the way I play. Now, to be honest with you, I, it takes a while before the action really picks up in this game. Now, this is probably about a, anywhere from about an hour to two hours in. Maybe less than that if you really just blaze through it, but uh, that's not what you want. That's not the uh, way you want to play Baldur's Gate. Uh, this is a game where, uh, to get the most out of it, you need to listen to the dialogue, read all of the scrolls and things that you find, uh, do all the side quests. Um, otherwise, uh, what's the point? I mean, this is not... World of Warcraft or a game like that. <laughs> this isn't Diablo. This is all about the story. Uh, but I will uh, skip ahead a bit here because I want you to see some of the later parts of the game. Now here I am. I finally got to the friendly arms in and there's an unfriendly a-hole uh, waiting for me here. This guy is really badass. He's a magic user. He just killed me <laughs> repeatedly uh, when I just had Emma Wynn and uh, my character. So I found out you can sort of whiz around this guy and run inside and then you come back and kick his ass when you've got uh, Jahira and Khalid with you. Uh, but just to show you how quickly this can go, now you hit the space bar to issue some orders. Uh, this is called Real Time with Pause. Uh, not not turn-based uh, by any stretch, but it does let you have a bit more uh, control over the battle. Oh, uh, it's not going to do any good here. <laughs> just uh, one magic missile and I am dead. So I'll have to uh, start over. A lot of people probably just skip right past this death scene, but this actually gives you some uh, information, a clue, if you will, about who you are. Uh, that's, of course, a big part of this game, is figuring out who are you and why do these people want to kill you so bad. It's all answered there in the <laughs> death scene, if you think about it. Now, you got a choice of characters or companions. Uh, you'll meet more than you can have in your party, so you get some choices about who you want to accompany you. I encourage you to try them all. Uh, you can always replay the game with different companions, and it makes it for a very different experience. And uh, I just wanted to show you here a little bit of the role play. So Silky here is trying to convince me that she's uh, that these guys are out to kill her, but as you'll see, they she's the one <laughs> lying, <laughs> trying to take advantage of of my heroic nature. There's you know there's probably th thousands maybe. Um, examples of these little, they're not, I don't know if you would call it a full-fledged side quest, but just chances to bring in that sort of tabletop D&D role-playing atmosphere that I just love so much. You know, this is not, this is, even now, this is only, I think, chapter one, maybe, or chapter two. So not even uh, close to being done with this. And then there's the Tales of the Sword Coast expansion. <laughs> Uh, your character will be uh, literally godlike uh, by the time you're done with this. And you're going to need that power to uh, beat the game. So, I mean, there's lots of more stuff I can cover here, but uh, I think that should be enough to uh, give you a general overview about why I like the game so much. Uh, the second game, Baldur's Gate 2, actually, in my opinion, improves a lot. Uh, it's got a much nicer interface, in my opinion. Uh, plus, it has uh, some cool... Uh, additional rules and things to make it a little bit more compelling. 
So I actually prefer the, the second game to the first, but uh, by all means, uh, under no circumstances should you begin with the second game. Uh, Baldur's Gate 1 is where you want to start. And if you've never played this before, then I, I'm actually kind of... Uh, I envy you because you've got this great adventure ahead of you. It's uh, just a wonderful thing. You can pick this up for practically nothing now. Uh, maybe like five, ten dollars and you get the uh, one and two and all the expansions and a convenient DVD set. So I highly recommend you go do that right now. Life is glorious. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, I'll be back next week with the first part of my interview with Jeff Williams. Uh, he's the designer of Dark Star. And uh, whether you've played the game or not, I think you'll be very uh, interested in this uh, interview. He's a very colorful and witty guy. And plus, he's got a sort of unique uh, outsider's perspective uh, on the industry. And a lot of uh, stuff about Hollywood and uh, the relationship to, uh, uh, to game designers. I think you'll be really uh, fascinated by that, as, as I am. Um, I also want to thank, of course, everyone who has been donating and contributing to the show. Really appreciate it. I'll be uh, toasting all of you uh, this week with a uh, Alexander Keith's Nova Scotia-style brown ale. <laughs> I have uh, no idea what a Nova Scotia-style uh, brown ale is supposed to taste like, but uh, I guess we'll find out. And on that note, I have a Nietzsche quotation. Of course, uh, Bioware seems to like Nietzsche since they opened their uh, epic series with him. Uh, but anyway, here's a slightly different quotation from Nietzsche. For art to exist, for any aesthetic activity to exist, there is one indispensable precondition. Intoxication. <laughs> See you guys next week. Every hamster has his day.